Hey team, welcome to another video. I'm excited today to talk to you about housing glitches. Those techniques that you need to know in order to really put your unique stamp on your housing in Final Fantasy XIV. We are going to cover the settings you need to double check before you get into glitching. We are going to cover the housing items that you will need to use as tools to do the various glitches. We will cover the top three most popular glitches and even some practical application of those glitches. And then finally, if you hang tight until the end, I'll even show you a couple of outdoor glitches that you can do outside of your housing in Final Fantasy XIV. But please keep in mind that the majority of these glitches can be used whether we're working in an apartment, a free company room, a small, medium, or a mansion. So let's go ahead and get started. First, go into your escape menu and then keybind and then system and make certain that you have something for display subcommand and something for confirm. Mine, I believe, are the default, so I have display subcommand as the star or asterisk on the numpad, and then confirm as the numpad zero. Just make sure if you've used those for something else that you have something set up for display subcommand and confirm. We're going to be using that a lot for housing glitches. The next one is just go into your housing menu, which is social and then housing. Go into indoor furnishings and then your storeroom, just make sure that display preview is turned on. If it's not, a lot of these won't work. So it should be by default, but just another thing to check. Once you have those set up, you're ready to start glitching and we're gonna talk about tools next. All right. Now let's talk about the toolkit of items that you'll want to have on hand in order to complete the glitches. Some can be purchased from housing merchants. Some uh, you either have to craft or purchase from the market board. So the stage panel here is amazing. You will use this a ton. This can be purchased from any housing merchant for a few thousand gil. The rug here the oasis leaf rug can also be purchased from housing merchants very cheap the riviera wall shelf is one that you will either have to craft or buy off the market board these can be pretty pricey but definitely worth it make sure you have one or two of these on hand you will be using it a ton then you've got the wooden loft again something that you will use quite frequently both in your housing designs and in glitching this one is a craft or market board purchase. I love the white rectangular partition. I use these a lot for glitches. They're really easy to work with and just amazing. You will have to get these off the market board or craft them yourself, but well worth it. Trust me, you'll use that a lot if you pick them up. And then last but not least, Oriental Round Table. This is another item that you'll use a lot to glitch. It's a really good height, one you have to either get off the market board or craft yourself. So this is the toolkit that you will want to have on hand. There's a few more items that people use, but I would say this is a really good core set to start with and a few items that you just want to keep forever to use for housing glitches. All right, so the first technique I want to talk about is the storage placement glitch or what I like to affectionately call place escape. And the reason I like to call it place escape is because that's essentially what you're doing in order to place housing items where you normally wouldn't be able to. One of the places you can put items is on the top of windowsills in your housing. So check this out. I'm going to go to, I'm in my storage. So in order to do this glitch, you need to take the items from storage. I'm going to left click on the ashtray. And what that does is it brings it out and you'll grab it with a left click. 
and then I'm going to actually, I'm going to turn grid snap off so that I can have a little more control over this. Now what I'm going to do is use the context menu that we talked about earlier in order to place this item. And then I'm going to quickly escape out of it. So I've got mine again, set as the asterisk on the numpad. Once I hit that, you'll notice that place comes up. I'm going to hit the uh, enter or zero on my numpad and then escape right away. And you'll notice that the ashtray is now on top of the windowsill. You can use this glitch to place a ton of different items in areas you normally wouldn't be able to. One popular example is to place things on top of your fireplace. What you'll see here is that the carbuncle lamp, which normally can't be placed on top of the fireplace is there. And that was done using the from storage placement glitch or place escape. So back to this, another way that you can use this and one that I've used quite a bit is to put wooden beams in places that you normally wouldn't be able to. So I'm going to right click on it. That brings it out. I'm going to left click to grab it. Now you'll notice here it's purple. Basically it's telling me that I can't place it there. But if I use the place escape method, there it is. It's been placed on the side of the loft. And if I escape out of the housing menu, you'll see that the ashtray is still there and the wooden beam is still there. This can be used indoors and outdoors, and it's just a great way to glitch things into places that you normally can't. So if you're going to put something out and it's turning purple on you, please try the storage placement method first. Another note with the storage placement glitch or the place escape glitch is it will tell you if it's not something that can be done. So for example, if I wanted to try to put this Riviera stool, I right click on it. I use a left click to grab it. I put it up on the windowsill. I go into my context menu. I hit place escape and it says unable to place item. So you'll know if it's something that will work or not when you try to do it. Uh, don't over frustrate yourself trying to use the place escape method to put things up that can't be. There are plenty of other methods that we can use in order to do it. So I'm going to try this lamp here. I'm going to grab the lamp. You want to get it right, right about on top of the windowsill. And that worked. So if you want to put lamps on the top of your windowsill, and actually that looks pretty cool, uh, feel free to do so. But some things like that stool I showed you won't work. The next housing glitch I want to talk about is floating. And actually there's kind of two types of floating. There's floating where you place the housing item on top of something else and you remove what was under it so it just floats at that height. And then there's also using things like the loft and the Riviera wall shelf to float things up step at a time to get to a certain height. And I will show you both versions of floating. One thing to be mindful of is most items have a height requirement. So what that means is if you're trying to float something and you find that it just it keeps falling down, it keeps falling down, try to float it a little higher because it might not have hit that height requirement necessary. But for example, I've got my oriental round table here. This is part of why this is such a great tool to have for housing glitches. It's a really good height. And for this type of floating, you can really take your items right from inventory and I'm going to place it right on this table here. And what's important is that you turn counter placement off. Once you've placed the item, grab it with left click, give it a little wiggle and then right click to cancel. Now, when I take the table away, you'll notice that the item is floating in midair at that height. Pretty cool, right? 
I also wanted to verify for you that it doesn't matter for this type of floating if you pull from inventory or the storeroom. One of these lamps is from the storeroom, the other is from inventory. I left the apartment and came back, and as you can see, they're both still floating. So the second type of floating I want to talk about is the gradual float. This is used when you want to float non-tabletop items into a loft. So currently you can only put tabletop items onto a loft. So if I put that here, it's going to let me put that lamp there, but it won't let me put the table there, which is kind of lame. What if you want a bedroom set or a dining room set or something else up into your loft? Well, you can do it and I'm going to show you how. And then the other way, other reason would be if you want to float something like this rectangular wall partition up. So let's say you want to have a loft and you want to have walls around the loft like this, but instead of being at this ground level, you want that wall up with the loft. So I'm actually going to show you how to do both of these things as much as you can when you are floating your items, you want to have as many of them set up as you can. So let's say, and I know this isn't probably something you would do, but let's say that you wanted this table and this chair to be your dining room set floated up into your loft. Might as well have both of them there so that you're only having to do the float once. So the way this works is the items that you're using to float, you want to pull from inventory. So I'm going to go with the loft float first. I'm going to turn my grid snap off so that I have more control over the height. I'm going to go back to move object and I'm going to, I, uh, sorry, I'm going quick here. I left click and that, or right, bleh, I right click, hit place to grab the loft. And then as long as, and you'll notice I have a stage panel back there. You can sometimes do this on the wall, but it doesn't work great. I'd recommend having a stage panel there to help you float these things. And as long as I have a little bit showing, I'm going to left click escape. So much like we did with the storage one, but instead of going into the context menu, I'm just going to use the left mouse click and escape. And you'll notice I did get the table, but I did not get the chair. So I'm going to back out and team, I'm going to keep this in the video because these types of frustrations are going to happen. You definitely need patience and love in order to complete these housing items. And different things have different hitboxes that you need to hit. There we go. So now I'm going to go back into my inventory here and or housing menu rather, and I'm going to put the loft back indoor furnishings, place the loft in inventory, right click, left click, make sure I'm low enough to where I'm going to hit the uh, requirements for both of these items. And again, left click escape. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to put the loft back into my inventory. I'm going to float this up a little bit more. And once you get confident, you'll notice I'm skipping a couple of steps here. Once you're really confident, you'll notice I'm not changing this back to move selected item. I'm just literally grabbing it, putting it back in inventory, right click, left click, place escape. I will warn you though, this is a very dangerous game I'm playing because if I click one thing wrong, if you make that kind of mistake or that kind of thing happens, just go right back to it and you'll notice that they both 
kind of realigned themselves as long as I was still under that hitbox. All right, so that's probably good. This next part is critical, critical, critical. If I were to, even if I were to grab this and give it a wiggle with this method, it's not gonna stick. So with the other floating method where I just grab it, gave a wiggle, turned the um, counter placement off and I was good. I was able to leave and come back. With this gradual floating method, you actually need to rotate the item and complete the rotate. It doesn't matter if you rotate it completely around and put it in the same spot. You need to rotate the item and complete the rotate. Now when I leave, see they're still floating. Now when I leave the apartment, you'll see that they're still floating. That is now a permanent float. So next, I'm going to put the wall up for my loft, and I want this white rectangular partition to be floated up to create a sidewall or back wall for my loft area, okay? What's important is that I've got my stage panel here that I'm gonna use to float it. What's important is that the stage panel is through the partition quite a bit. If you've got it at the very edge like this, it just, it doesn't work. You wanna make sure that it's through, it's clipping through quite a bit. So that should be sufficient. I'm gonna actually bring the stage panel forward just a little bit to be sure. And now I'm gonna use this Oasis leaf rug to get a little bit of lift on the partition, just enough to grab onto. So again, this is in an inventory. I'm gonna place it right underneath here and I'm gonna do place escape. And as you can see, my partition lifted up a little bit. I go back into indoor furnishings, I grab this, I move this out of the way, and I've got just enough lift. Hopefully you can see that okay on that wall partition to grab onto. And in order to grab onto it and continue to lift it, and this is very tedious, I'm going to use this Riviera wall shelf. Again, I'm going to take it from inventory and I'm going to almost cover, but not completely, I'm going to almost cover the bottom of the shelf here and then we place escape. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, that took quite a few tries, team, to get that to start going. Once it does, you're in good shape, but I guess the piece of advice I would give here is if you're trying to lift these rectangular wall partitions, it is one of the most difficult pieces of furniture to lift. As you can see, I've got the stage panel quite a bit through. Again, use the Oasis rug to get a little bit of lift, and now I'm going to very carefully use the Riviera wall shelf, almost completely covering the bottom of the partition, but not quite. And then as you can see, it will slowly but surely start to lift. Once you've got, once you've got the first two done, you are in good shape for the rest of them. things I was really hoping for with this video I've seen a you know I've seen other housing glitching videos online but 
one of the things I didn't quite get out of them was, okay, I see what you're doing to glitch, but how would I actually, or what would I actually use that for? So you can let me know in the comments if I'm giving you enough examples or if you'd like more examples, but I wanted to have one, an all encompassing glitch video, one where all the major glitches were taught in one video. And two, I wanted everyone to have practical application tips, things that, oh yeah, I, I see what I could use that for and spark your own creativity and innovation because of it. All right, we're gonna use that as our last lift for this partition. Very important, please do not lose all your work and forget to go through and do a completed spin on these. This will guarantee that you don't lose your work. I'm gonna take this stage panel, if I can get it to move, uh, and I'm gonna get that out of the way. And just for grins, I mean, don't be afraid to like overdo it with these moves here. And then take my loft. We'll say about like that. And you'll see we've got the beginnings of a loft area. The chair, the table are floated, the partitions floated. And if I leave the apartment, and if we're lucky, when we go back, everything will still be up there. Et voila, we've got a permanently floated loft area with wall. So that is the second type of floating. The last type of housing glitch that I wanted to talk about before we get into a few more practical examples is the art of clipping. Super popular example of clipping is using this Alpine chair and this Oasis stool. And if I simply take this, I now have the makings of a toilet. And I'll show you an image here. So you've got a Hingen cupboard and a Alpine chair, and then the Oasis stool dyed blue to look like water used to create a toilet. The other one I want to show you here is if you look at the toilet brush off to the side, that's actually a quill pen with a vase used to look like a toilet brush. And those items are clipped together. And actually the quill pen is floated a little bit so that it, it fits the vase correctly to look like it's a toilet brush. So lots of cool things you can do with clipping. Clipping is important because you can use it a lot in conjunction with floating or even storage placement to create some really unique looking housing items and housing rooms. So now that we've covered the top three glitches, I wanted to go back to my house and show you how some of these things can be put together. Hopefully it'll inspire some ideas for you. All right, first, you can see my Namazu helpers here are floated on top of these Hingen sideboards that are dyed. That's what the wood is underneath. And they have been floated to look like they're standing on top of those boxes. I actually have a separate video on the channel of how to do that specifically. Um, let me think of another example. These lofts being at this ground level, I used the storage placement trick in order to get them to be that low to the ground. Normally you can't put a loft that low, 
But if you take it from storage and use that context menu trick I showed you before, you'll be able to make the lofts low to the ground like that. So you've just got kind of this one little step up. A few other glitches that are done in this room. The hot tub is clipped into the lofts. The shower here is clipped into the hot tub. And the trees and lamps are clipped into the lofts to make them kind of at the same level. So a lot of different glitches just in that simple room here. This kitchen, this stove right here in the kitchen has just about every type of glitch you can imagine. Again, something I'm, I created a separate video on. The dials are floated at the Oriental round table height to look like dials in front of the stove. The smoke coming from the hot plates on the stove are is uh, ashtrays that have been floated in, and clipped into it. The hot plates themselves are Riviera round stools that have been dyed jet black and floated and clipped into the stove. So again, just about every every technique has been done there. So floating, clipping, storage placement, all of it. You can see some examples here. If I come upstairs, this TV, the poster that is the TV screen was floated using a stage panel. So I put a stage panel with the poster on it. I grabbed the poster with counter placement off, gave it a wiggle, removed the stage panel, and I now have a poster as a TV screen. And what's cool is you can see it is completely flat on there. It's literally one pixel beyond what I used as the TV screen. The TV itself are two manor fireplaces dyed jet black and turned around. The light is a Tonberry lamp that was floated and clipped into the TV. So again, I even have lamps here. You can kind of see it. I have lamps floated into the orange trees to give even more of a glow to the TV and the TV area. If you look to the at the pillar to the right and the pillar to the left of the orange trees, you can see kind of the glow that that is casting. So a lot of different glitches used. In fact, if I go back here, I've got it set up so it's really tough to see that this is a fireplace, but I'm sure you can kind of tell there and there that it's the back of the fireplace. Anyway, I don't want to go too long in the tooth of the examples, but I wanted to give just a couple. So hopefully you can start to see what you can do with this. And then the last thing I wanted to cover is a couple of outdoor using some of these techniques. We learned to do a couple of outdoor techniques. So I'll be right back with you. All right. So we are outside my house and I want to show you how to place a mailbox using the storage placement method that we talked about. So I just bought this Regal letter box and I'm going to put it in my housing storage. Then if I go to my storeroom, I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to grab it with left click. See how this is purple. Make sure that it's about where I want it. That looks good. I'm going to go into my context menu and hit place and see how it placed it for me where I normally wouldn't be able to. This is how you get your mailbox to be in the right kind of spot that it would be at your house. So now you can see I've got a cool little Regal mailbox that is technically outside my plot. So if I escape out of there, there you go. Pretty cool, right? All right, the next one I'm going to show you, and I'm actually going to go to Mirla's plot for this because I've already done it on mine, is I'm going to show you how to place this deck like this on your housing plot, how to float it. So in order to do this, I'm going to grab a couple items and I'll be right back with you. All right, so here we are at Mirla's house, and I'm going to show you how to float the wooden deck, but I will warn you, this is by far one of the most finicky housing tasks I've ever tried to do for sure. 
here I am. I'm at Goblet and I've got the stock wall here. I've got my deck in storage. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to outdoor furnishings. I'm going to go to storage and I'm going to act like I'm going to place the deck. And then I'm going to rotate it and then do the rotate. And what that'll do is it's placed the deck kind of on the fence right about where I want it. The next thing you need to do is change the fence. So I'm going to go to remodel exterior and I'm going to use this Hingen fence here. Now I'm going to go to outdoor furnishings again and I'm going to give this a rotate and here's where I'm going to escape out of it real quick. So I'm going to place escape and that did not work like I wanted it to. So I'm going to go outdoor furnishings again. there you have it. We have a floated deck. I will include all kinds of texts and things to discuss how I got this done. This is very much a trial and error effort to get this to stick. And then once you've got your deck floated, I will show you at my place the different kinds of things you can add to it. Of course, the deck is dyeable, so you can dye it to match your walls or whatever color you want. And then I really like having this kind of setup where I've got hedge partitions along the sides of a living arch here. So those are the different components that lead to the deck. And then if you go underneath, I've got a lamp underneath the deck and that's what's adding kind of that glow here at night underneath. So just a couple of ideas to consider. I got stuck there for a second. Just a couple of ideas to consider with your deck. So thank you for watching the housing glitch video today. I really appreciate it. I would very much appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. About 85%, believe it or not, of people who watch our videos aren't subscribed. So uh, not a ton to do. Just hit that button. You'll make sure you get notified whenever we come out with new videos. Thank you so much for watching. It's greatly appreciated. Hopefully you found them helpful. And we will talk to you in the next video. Thanks, team. See ya. Almost cover the bottom of the shelf here and then we place escape. <laughs> I'm going to almost cover the entire bottom here. Fuck. Alright, so the text that you might accidentally put the partition back in inventory. So if you're real careful, like here, I'm going to give it another lift. And there I did. I put it right back in inventory. I think I might cut this from the video. So if you're in goblet like this is it goblet just try storage first and then inventory or you might be able to remember ah, that's fucking garbage it's another really difficult one let's see uh, that's better